what I want to say to you right now is that a lot of times, I said it earlier, I'm going to say it again. We're seated in heavenly places and we're having a mental breakdown on earth. Over and over and over. We're seated in heavenly places and we can't think straight, can't read a word, in an emotional turmoil. I just need us to understand something. You're saved and the rest of your soul, your soul needs to catch up with the fruit of the Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we need to know and we need to remember that yes, the moment we decide that Jesus is Lord and God and confess him with our mouth and believe him in our hearts, righteousness and salvation is granted to us. So those of you who are asking God to renew your soul, which is your mind, your will, and emotions, and also take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit, need to reject the thought that says, well, you're not saved. Because what's happening is that we are forgetting that there are three tenses being used here with salvation. Instantly, we are saved as a new creation. We understand that. We die at that moment, we go straight to heaven. Even at times when we are having the breakdown, we're saved. Unless we've turned away and come off the narrow road and said, I don't want anything more to do with Jesus like Judas did and a, and a couple others. But you're not in that position where you all are getting some bombardments in your mind is that you, 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 you're jumping back and forth, but you don't understand at a deeper level. If you look into salvation, there are three different tenses used for a reason. So Titus 3.5 will say, we were saved. I'm fleshing this out because I'm coming to teach a little later and I need us to grasp, I need us to grasp something um, that we, we, we are allowing the enemy to feed us lies. It says here, he saved us. Okay? Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy. So I just want us to note, he saved us. Okay? But we also read in 1 Corinthians 1.18, and I, and I have taught you this before, where there are three tenses, and what's happening is that we are not underlining stuff, pinning it up and remembering it. So you go now, and you're praying, and things telling you you're not saved. You're supposed to go back to what you were taught before. What's going on with us is that we are not treating the word of God like how we study for exams. We are not underlining, noting, saying this is this verse. I can't forget this verse. I know this other verse because scripture interprets scripture. So, so you're having your breakdown and the enemy says you're not saved. You go back to where you learned you were saved because you're doubting based on your emotions, which is part of your soul, which has not yet been completely renewed. Are, you, are we understanding? We are constantly going back to things that we are supposed to to know even if we don't feel it. We choose to stand on God's word. So 1 Corinthians 1.18 will say, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. What are we talking about? You were saved, but you're being saved. 
Work out your salvation, not work for. Your mind, will, and emotions is coming in line with that new creation that instantly was taken over by the Holy Spirit. That same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will be able to discern the perfect will of God. Your different translations have the different wordings, but we're talking about the fact is it's a continuous process. Though you are instantly saved, your soul must begin to bear fruit in line with repentance because you could say you are saved. Like some people say, so I could live how I want. I don't need to take care of my soul. I don't need to feed it. I don't need to pray. I saved. I'm waiting to go to heaven, which is another gospel. It's another gospel. And then we have 1 Peter 1, 5 that talks about salvation ready to be revealed in the future. You have to see the three tenses because otherwise you'll get confused with what grace is, works, and Satan will confuse you with thoughts that you have to take captive and take those thoughts and say this is what the scripture says. So while I am asking Jesus, and you will hear me say Jesus, you hear me say yes, sure, I've told you all before, some of the satanic ritual abuse survivors cannot say Jesus because they were tormented and tortured in rituals with people dressed looking like Jesus. So that when they begin to have memories and you tell them about Jesus, they say, no, Jesus, he, he, he tormented me. So I have to say, yes, yeah, sure, until that part of their soul is healed. So I'm using them as an example. So I'm saying here, they are saved, but they're soul has to be healed there's all many of you yourself experience fragmentation of the soul where part of your soul you don't even understand pushes back and tells you things and some of you are so demon focused you're casting demons out when the fact is those demons were supposed to go a long time ago you have authority over them your soul needs to be renewed and then you tell yourself, well, I'm not saved. But the word says, unless you made up that you didn't surrender, you are saved. But you need to understand that at the end of the day, the day we receive Jesus into our hearts, our spirit is revived and born of God because we were born physically alive and spiritually dead. We are now spiritually alive because that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, my word, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells in me, my spirit man. That's a new creation. But our soul and our body has got to now be renewed. Now our body is deteriorating. We know but there are parts of our body, and it's more glaring to me when I deal with those who have had extreme occultism in their life. And let me just say, more and more normal Christians have had extreme occultism that's affected their body. So even though your body is deteriorating, when you really ask Yeshua, to purge your body of those things that wasn't natural illnesses, then what you will find is that your body is literally itself being renewed. But the test is really fruit that comes from your soul. Your soul must be renewed. 
Your soul must be submitted to your spirit, this, which is the spirit of God. And that's where the challenge is, and we are getting confused because we are living soulishly. I feel this, I feel that, so that must be what it is. No, what it is, is what the word says. I'm feeding my spirit man the word, but I know that my soul has not yet caught up with my spirit man. So guess what? While we live, your spirit man, your soul must be submitted to the Spirit of God. I hear too many people saying, I felt this way, so I acted this way. And what happens in that case is you are living soulishly. And the way of the world that has infiltrated the church has encouraged that foolishness. Because we judge even the presence of God by how we feel. I felt tingly, so therefore he must have been here. No, actually he might not have been. It comes with fruit. You leave here and the fruit is literally not even an encouragement to go and read more of the Bible. I'm not saying how you see yourself. Because how you see yourself might be how somebody raised you in the way they see you and that part of your mind has not yet been renewed. It's, do I want to pray? Do I want to read the word? Can I say more than ever that I cannot deny that Jesus is Lord and he's, I cannot deny that he's God and I am wanting to come into his presence again on Sunday. And if one of my, I hear of a friend who is on their deathbed, I want to go and tell them about Jesus before they die. Is that what's happening in your life? Because that's the fruit we are talking about. Not this, I feel better. At some point in time, your soul will catch up with your spirit man. Because... There is a process of working out your salvation, walking every day with Yeshua, a process. It's called progressive sanctification. But that's not going to happen overnight. So if we don't stop and begin to remind ourselves of what the truth is, of who we are, every day you're going to be dealing with your soul telling you, I'm feeling down. This is happening. David, I keep saying, spoke to his soul. Soul, why are you downcast? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Because that's what the word says. I, I, I just need us to keep this in mind. Not to make you feel like, oh gosh, well I can't even say how I'm feeling. No, it's not that. If it's one step you've got to keep going back to is what does God say about me being saved? What does he say in his word? Not what I'm thinking, not what I'm feeling. So every challenge I get, I don't forget what he's saying while I bring my soul in line with God's word and renewal in time will take place. So I want us to know that Paul said it very clearly in Romans 7, 21 to 24, that his inward man, his spirit delights in the law of God, but there's another law in his members, which is the law of sin. And he goes on to describe that he does the things he doesn't want to do and he doesn't do the things that he wants to do. Is that not our walk? But we're not stopping there. Well, that's how I am. No, that's not, that's not how I'm going to remain. But Paul said it. He delights, his spirit man delights in the law of God. But there's another law that is at work. That pushes back against what he desires to do. Paul was clearly saved. But if I may use the phrase... He still needed salvation in other areas. Other areas needed to be renewed. So that they line up with the word of God in terms of fruit. 
So remember that once you receive Jesus into your heart, into your spirit man, he comes, your spirit is revived. From that moment on, your spirit man doesn't sin, but battles the sin in your flesh, in the rest of your soul. Your spirit man needs to be fed so that when you are doing things, your spirit man is going to alert you. Your spirit man must be fed. Your spirit man is literally, when we say God increase and we decrease, the thing is, it is our flesh and our soul, those things that are still not renewed, that have to decrease. I want us to, I know these are basic things, y'all. These are basic things, but it is keeping us back because we are still going along with how we are feeling. When you feel a certain way, I'm not asking you to get rid of it. I'm asking you then to go to the next stage of what you have been taught. We have to start paying attention to your soul. Your soul needs to be ministered to. Your soul needs the word to wash, to wash it. That's what's left out of many Many times when Christians have been discipled, they're told, okay, you're saved. Let's go through this passage. Let's go through that passage. No, listen, your soul needs to be discipled. Your soul needs to be ministered to. Your soul might have been traumatized and fragmented. And then you start getting memories of things that you don't even know when they happen. Your soul needs attention. The psychiatrist will tell you, Learn to manage your soul. They have different, different personalities, okay. Learn to live with them or take some meds. Yeshua heals the broken hearted. That's the word for soul, heart. He will heal your soul because he wants you to worship him with all your soul, all your mind. So your mind must be completely renewed. And if your mind was fragmented, he will. He's the only one that can integrate back souls parts of your soul that have been fragmented your soul needs attention it's what the word of god says and it's what the word of god does and i'll tell you in a second because i'm just want to encourage you as we go back into worship there's hope y'all we're not called to remain with spots and wrinkles and just be like i'm saved and i'm just waiting for him to come he's not coming until his church Remnant church, whatever remnant church we're talking about, meaning his people are without spot and wrinkle. And so even though we have the mind of Christ positionally, we still need our, need our minds to be renewed. So there's a, if you want to say future salvation, but the English language uses the same words, so I don't know what else to say. God wants our whole being to be sanctified, purified, and saved. But let me say this to you. And I believe, um, and, and I don't know how far I'll get today. I'm, I'm going to explain further about the fact that there's generational stuff in the bloodline. And just remember, last time I heard, the son of Adam was still affecting those who were born on this earth, us, but through the blood of Jesus, we are not at the mercy of the son of Adam. But like everything else, we've got to apply what we have been taught and the word talks about renouncing those things, those shameful things, renouncing them. So there's a part of our, the process of sanctification that will mean renouncing those things that are deep and hidden. And I think you know that David said, the deep and hidden things in me, purge me with his up and I will be clean. I'm not gonna go there just yet. I just need to say something that's extremely um, encouraging 
and I hope it's encouraging for you. See, a lot of us, a lot of us have this idea. We are, you know what, it's, it's us and things are so bad. And, and, and they could be, they could be, I'm not doubting. Um, and the, the, the pain and the cycles in my life, when is it going to, when is it going to stop? When is it going to stop? Nobody understands. And I just want you all to know that the word of God is the word of God. Whether or not you have experienced what the word says is truth, the word of God is truth. Okay? And what I'm finding that I can't deny, and there are those who have started sharing, and there are those who you will not hear from as yet because of the level of bondage, God would want them to, 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 to further be set free because their lives are actually in danger of being snuffed out because they have to stay hidden. Because when you get into Satanism and you come out, Satan, those Satanists want to kill you if you don't come back to Satanism. And the torment can be really terrible at certain times because parts of their soul have not been renewed as yet. So if you, if you call your torment at a level two, their torment is a level nine. So on any given day, they can experience freedom and walk in peace. And some other day, some other trigger occurs because of rituals that they were put, they were involved in. Okay, and I keep telling you all, these are not necessarily bad people. These are not people who wake up and they're wicked. There may be those, but there are a lot of them. Christian families that have children that were not, they, they, they don't question the church, they don't question the schools, they question nothing. Here's my little precious bundle and it's witches and warlocks blending in with the church and with the schools that many of the ones I minister to was from young ages. They were initiated, not even knowing it was witchcraft until they're older. So let's just put out of our head, well, there's a bunch of wicked people and that's where they got into and so sorry for them, but no, it's a lot of, a lot. And let me tell you why I say a lot of Christian families, but not exclusive, because they want the Christian families, they want the Christian families to go under. They want the little, precious, pure children of the generational line that's supposed to be continuing to bear fruit for the army of Christ. They want those to turn and begin to worship Satan, okay? I want you to understand, and I, and I need to say this, because saints, you've got to live your spirit beings in a human body. You've got to live your life through your spirit and not your flesh. Not your emotions, not your soul, because you're going forward and then you're going backward. You're going forward, you're going backward. How I woke up this morning is how I'm going to live today. No, I woke up this morning and God said to me, you are the apple of my eye. God said to me, you are my adopted one. God said to me, you are the one that I said I will be with you through the deep waters. I will take you through the fire. You are that one. That's the one is you. That's, I live through my spirit. Or my soul might say, don't even talk about my body. At my age, my body might be, please don't even try to get up. You won't stand it. You're not able to stand today because of the pain in your body. But what you might more be hearing is, I'm so worn out like I feel like I was hit with a bus yesterday. But not, not in my physical body as much as emotionally, like I just want to go and be before Yeshua because... 
or some pain, some, some deep pain because of somebody that did something. Somebody told me, I think it's yesterday they said, my mind, my mind feels like a fog, but my soul feels like people have just sent arrows to me. And I said to that person, see, when those things happen, you need to understand, I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm living life through my spirit. It doesn't mean that overnight you're going to be able to do that, but you've got to stop the programming of living through your soul and through your flesh. You've got to live through your spirit, man, and you've got to continue to tell your soul. You're going to get renewed. I'm going to read the word today. And I'm going to speak to you and tell you what the word is saying. Some of you, well, you've come to the conclusion, you know definitely that when your soul starts to get attention and the renewal in your soul begins and the healing of woundedness, the healing, the word says here, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This is Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. That applies to you as well. Why is it important? Because you are called to enjoy the journey and not just focus on the destination. We know we're going home. Well, I hope you know. I'm not trying to say it presumptuously. But every day, you remind yourself, I did surrender. I did invite him in. The word says it, I'm going home. You've got too many of us. We're not, we not showing the world that we're enjoying the journey. We're focused on the destination. And as a result, nobody do want to go with us to that destination because there's nothing enjoyable about what he's done for us. What he's done for us applies to this earth as well. Yes, we know that this, this world is dark, but Jesus said, he didn't say, Daddy, take them all. He said, Daddy, do not take them out of this world, but protect them from the evil one. So I'm saying to you today, it is possible. But religion has it so that you're focused on the destination. You're focused on how you feel. You're focused on come on a Sunday and receive. You feel good for two hours. Then after that, it starts unraveling. You say, God, this is not what Christ died to give me. I need more. I need more. When you begin to re, you begin to question the fact that you're 20 years in church and two attacks on your emotions flattening you for the next three weeks, something is wrong. And God is saying, I'm returning for church without spot and wrinkle. In the midst of the darkness, the light of Christ will shine through his church. So when I was very blessed today, and I'm going to wrap up. This was not meant for me to go in a session to preach and whatever, but I'm spirit-led, and so therefore the Holy Spirit wanted to say what the Holy Spirit wanted to say. So let me tell you what's becoming more and more common to give you all hope. Because I want you to know Iron sharpens iron, but a lot of you hide from each other, don't want nobody to know nothing, so we don't really help each other because iron not sharpening, because we're not being transparent. So I have to be transparent to tell you what's going on so that you understand that Jesus is still on the throne and he is going to do for you everything he promised if you want it. If you want it, if you want to just stop at halfway deliverance and healing, he's not going to force you. I'm encouraging you not to stop. I'm encouraging you to, I, I, now listen, when someone was, is, is in um, ritual abuse, there are different levels and different degrees of, of that level of abuse. And there are those even in church that actually have come out and ha are wrestling with ritual abuse, but it may be a lesser level. Do you understand? 
So the kind of depths of bondage that I'm coming across is it's not abnormal to be discipling someone and all of a sudden you hear a voice say, I am legion and I'm not leaving. To you all, that's like, oh my gosh, that's 40 days fast to deal with. I don't deal with it. The anointing of God breaks those yokes. So for me, it's I bind you and cage you. Let me get back to the child of God. Because Yeshua has not said cast that legion out yet. Because remember, you've got to be ministered to. Your soul needs to be ministered to. Many of you... Everything that may be a demon you want out, but the truth is your woundedness and your pain and even your trauma and fragmentation that's part of who you are needs to be healed. So I focus a lot on the healing that has to come from the awful, 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 can't describe. There are those that will say, I'm not ready to tell you yet. I'll tell you in time. I can't tell you yet. It was so terrible. And then sometimes I hear stuff and God just helps me to give it to him because we have been living in a bubble. If we feel that the satanic church and satanists have not had their agenda and been carrying it out. But where does that leave people who have been so, so, stripped of everything in their soul, who have been raped multiple times. I can't even describe to you. Where does that leave them? Does it mean that, oh my gosh, I'm still dealing with rejection, so it can't be that they're going to get healing. It must seem impossible. It's not. And I'll let you know, I want to encourage you, and I keep saying to you, desperation for Yeshua is key. Key. If we don't stop wanting people and their validation more than we want Yeshua, we keep back our own healing. I'm saying this to you because you need to understand that I see the transformation come when they start locking into Yeshua, but they don't lock in straight away because they have had so many people do things to them. That they still, they start off with trust issues. So if you're going to help anyone, please make sure you deal with your own self first. Because you've got to love like if you have never been hurt before. When you start to love people who people have said they love, but they've really destroyed them. Remember, they come out of what they thought was okay, but it wasn't. 13-year-olds that were handed over to family members to help them to be a better 13-year-old turns out it's Satanism. And I can't begin to tell you the kind of stuff they were exposed to. So to them, love is just a word. So I want you to know, in the beginning, just like with you all, the wanting love is there, but the trust issues are also there. But... It, but Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Learn to love and not have your love conditional. Because you cannot help anybody if they see you as a person that only loves some of the time. Many of us want to love people, but we love them once they do things for us. And when they don't, we don't love them anymore. People observe that. Once we are able to receive love initially from a person, because remember, they don't know who Yeshua is, they, they will then get interested. You will know my disciples by their love. If my disciples do not love, many people who come for help cannot get it. Because it is the love that will draw them. And the love that is there even when they mess up. This is why in the church we have to stop looking at what people do right, wrong, or indifferent. And we've got to see them as souls that Christ died for. End of story. It doesn't matter if whatever you ask them to do they didn't do. The fact is 
God will bring that conviction. Even you might mention it, but you will love them while they are trying to get back on track. But many of us, that's not how we speak, even about ourselves. We can't even say to ourselves, soul, you messed up today, but Jesus loves you still. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Do you understand what's keeping us back? It's keeping us back from helping others and it's keeping us back from our own selves. Secondly, transparency. When they begin to believe that you're actually interested because they haven't turned away. You haven't turned away when they did things to make you turn away. You know, we are real petty in the body of Christ, huh? This person did me this, and because of that, you see me, I have nothing more to do with them. When God is helping you to become a person who it does not matter what people do to you, you will turn around and say, you know what? You want us to continue? I I'm really sorry that if I did this, if, if it is what it is you tell me I did, let there be forgiveness. And you see, that's why the offense in the body of Christ is keeping back the healing of many. So they have to know, no matter what, you're still going to turn around and be there. And then they begin to unpack their stuff. You want to disciple somebody what? With a passage of scripture? Great! Wonderful! Scripture is necessary. If you are really teaching the word, it's going to start to hit at some deep things that some people can't hold back. Stop trying to give them a solution. Just listen. You don't even have to talk about yourself. Just listen. Look at them in the eye and be like, okay, all right. I hear you. I hear you. Oh gosh. Don't come with no prophetic word for them. Now, thus say the Lord says, because of this that happened to you. Hush. Just listen. So you can say, I love you, even the worst things that they tell you. Because what they're waiting for is to really drop some of these things on you. That they want to test the water. I bring it back to you. I bring it back to you. Is there stuff that is there that's so terrible you haven't talked about? You need to start talking about it because if you are one of those that's still struggling, you're hiding. You're hiding. You want to impress. You, don't, you, don't, you want to say this and you don't want to say that. Transparency. Now you could stay at the level of I'm saved and I'll wrestle okay. Please, don't take up a, an appointment space with anybody who is trying to help people and you come in for help because you don't want help. You want to look good. You want to call yourself a Christian. Okay, you're going to heaven, but you're not going to walk in the destiny that Christ has called you to walk in because they have some spots and wrinkles that is keeping you back from when you walk down that road and you see someone and you say, hi, how are you? The anointing on you will cause yokes to break in that person just from, hi, how are you? Because that has been the call of the early church. So I want you to know, my heart is blessed at times when I get messages like what I'm about to share with you just so that you are encouraged today. Be encouraged, saints. Don't settle for religion. Don't settle for stopping at any point. Don't settle for that point alone. Let God lift the bar of higher and deeper, not legalism, not rituals, not trying to make it happen. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. The first thing has to be that you want Yeshua. Even if other people let you down, you still want him. You begin to realize people cannot save you, but he is your savior. It may not come straight away for some, but you are leading them and pointing them to Yeshua. So then a surrender comes. You know how many Christians I journey with? They know it wasn't even into ritual abuse. They were just Christians and really thought they were saved, but they weren't. They were religious. Sure, I'm a Christian, third generation. There's no such thing unless you want to tell me that with 
intent and meaning, you are sure you got saved, but not because your grandmother saved, you are saved. So, many things will happen to you to make you want to turn away. That's the sifting that will take place. Notice the disciples were sifted. Notice that Peter didn't just get to the stage Peter got to. Peter went through a sifting. The word says, Jesus said, Satan has asked to sift you and I'm praying for you. What did he do? He denied Jesus. What did Jesus do? He went back to him. He says, will you feed my lambs? Do you love me? That's the first thing. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. You know the things that Satan brings to you? You're no good, you're this, you're that, you're the... Jesus knew. Peter had to hear himself say, I love you, Lord, because he had denied him three times. He had to hear his own mouth say it. Some of you need to go back to, do you love the Lord? Yes, Lord, I love you. Do you love the Lord? Miss Lady, do you love the Lord? You love the Lord? You love the Lord? You love Jesus? Nah, you don't love Jesus. You love Jesus? Look in the mirror and say, do I love him? Yes, you love him. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. You could be assured he loves you. Why? His word says so. You don't feel it. What if he told you, I don't feel your love. I don't think you love me. Lord, I love you. I might be messed up in areas. There may be things that have happened, but I love you. Lord, I love you. I don't have anything else to give you except to say I love you. I love you. Saints, what devil could take that away from you? Why is that important? Because Peter needed to hear himself say it to get him to come to his senses. He had, he had given up and gone back fishing. And then he became fishers of men. You know what he came to understand? His soul was messed up. Fear, pride, you name it. Deny Jesus after he said he wouldn't do all that. But nobody could take away from him that he loved Jesus. It didn't look so to people. But the heart, Jesus knew his heart. He knows your heart. He knows your heart. He knows that you are wrestling with things that don't define you. But you need to get help for it. But every day you get up, Lord, I do love you. Nobody going to tell me otherwise. I, I can't give you up. I'm not going to walk away. From, I can't. Where am I going, Lord? Simon Peter said, where, where, where are we going? Where are we going? You have the words of eternal life. I'm saying this to you, y'all, because you've got to remember these things. Otherwise, every time the devil come with some big drama, you're going back to square one again. You've got to pause. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I might not have done it right today. I might not get it right tomorrow because I don't know what will happen. But one thing I know is that I love him. I love him. Are we understanding this? The devil can't take it away from you. I want to say um, this one bless my heart because from the very beginning she struggled with stuff that I told her one day she has to write a book because it's beyond even talking this kind of stuff. Yet I see where 
once she got to the place where it's Yeshua, can't say Jesus yet, starting to say Jesus, but Yeshua, when things would send her flying in a, in a turmoil, now she runs to him. She wanted to run to me first, a lot of the times, until she connected with him. I said, I love you, but Yeshua loves you more. Run to him. She's now connecting the dots. I want you to understand that I hear her say some things that I'm still waiting for Christians who've been in church for 20 years to say to me in the middle of their crisis. Because I know once you feel what I'm about to describe, you're going to get through. But when you swallow the lie that everything has gone crazy and, and as well as you're not sure if you want your sure. You're still thinking about it. We're still at the stage of you thinking about it. That's okay. But that's not going to pull you out of the Mary clay. It has to be that you are remembering it's about him. And, so, and you will have parts of your soul that will push back and not want him. But there is the child of God that knows I want him. So she says to me, she calls me mom and I allow her because I've tried to say don't, but I can't stop it. So it's not something I've asked. Sometimes spiritual children will find their parents, particularly if they don't have parents to love them back. She says, I ain't playing mom. Ain't no one going to come and ruin my relationship with Yeshua. Notice she's saying Yeshua, not me. Eh? I'll get frightened if she said me. Do you understand? Because the focus has to be Yeshua. I love Yeshua, mom. I ain't playing and being no mediocre Christian. First time I hear her using that phrase, mediocre Christian. If I was trying to take many to hell, I could win triple for my life before. I've gone through hell and back. Satan did too much to me. And now he's going to pay because he had an agenda for me. But Yeshua has a plan for my life since he knit me together in my mother's womb. Since when I get a message like that, I am aware I, I, it's not that tomorrow there wouldn't be a major crisis. Is this is where the devil cannot take you down a cliff. Because even if tomorrow a trigger of some memory comes, and, you, and the thing with memories, memories that of things that have occurred, are real, they get, they get back the smell, they get back the, the feeling. You can't make that up. So when that memory comes back of, I'll just be very graphic here, the kind of things that I have to hear. This is why I keep telling parents, this thing about, because it's the church, trust everything. You can trust, but no weeds and weed grow together. Right? When it comes to schools, you've got to ask lots of questions. When it comes to Sunday school, you've got to observe and ask lots of questions. When Satanists want to infiltrate, they're coming through where the Christians are. And a memory came back where... And I speak of a child of pastors. So in the same church of the pastor parents, a man put her to sit on his lap. And because there are a couple children in the audience, I'm not going to say what he did, but it was very graphic. And that was one of 
That's just a little trauma at the age of five. So when that memory came back, anger at parents, pain, shame, because it was a little five-year-old. When that happens, like it could happen tomorrow, our next memory or several, is she not going to feel pain? Is she not going to be, how could this have happened? Of course she is. Do you think overnight she's going to be, and I know you're sure, I ought not to question. You know how Christ Christians like to talk Christianese that's not even in the Bible, what will be, will be, and all this foolishness, right? She's going to go through those deep emotions that caused her to want, I think the other day, she wanted to go to a cemetery and just lie there and stay there for three days because of the pain. She, of course, she's going to experience that, y'all. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. What did she say? Where is she at? Where are you at? Where are you at? I don't want to be a mediocre Christian. Satan did too much. And now he's going to pay. She's finally realize Satan is the one to be vexed with. Not the mother and father, though we go through that still, because the healing has not been complete. She's not stuck on everybody did this and why, though we will have sessions like that. But it's Satan did it, and I'm not going back. And Yeshua has a plan for me. And so I say this as I wrap up to tell you, We are going through a process where our soul is being healed. A lot of those demons that, that are in her and others will go. They'll get cast out. But if that woundedness is not healed, if the anchor of her soul is not Yeshua, we're wasting time. Is the anchor of your soul Yeshua? Or is it a person? that you're looking to chat with later and they don't talk to you, so that sends you into oblivion for the, whole, for the whole night. Maybe that's a part of your soul that is very sensitive to rejection, but you have got to find a way to speak to your soul and function and go back to what really is the truth. Because you will always have something happening to you. We are spending too much time in the season of things happening, nothing is wrong with it, but you can't stay there. So when I get a message like this, I'm not saying anybody's better than anybody. I'm giving you hope because the kind of stuff, like she says to me, is, is, is it more that needs, like I need more healing? I, I said, we now start. We now start, like I can't tell her how much more. Because we don't focus on how much more. We focus on what's going on now. How is it we are being fed? How is it we've been fed, many of us, for many years? How is it we say we in the word? And that's the thing. That's the thing. The more challenges is the more she runs to the word. I teach her to run to the word. Maybe what we are doing is... We're going through seasons, we're in the word, we're not in the word. We're in prayer, we're not in prayer. We can't seem to settle down. If Yeshua is Lord of your life, then make him Lord of everything in your life. And whatever is going on with you, you've got to make sure you are being taken care of. Your spirit, your soul, and your body is also being ministered to. Yes, you're called to disciple and reach souls for Christ, but why isn't the church of Jesus Christ today making the impact where there were what? Just 11 or 12 disciples that turned the whole world upside down. A whole big section. That's why numbers mean nothing to me. Because fewer did more than what we are seeing today. But God is returning for church without spot and wrinkle. And we expect while more will fall away, the ones left will get stronger. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you one of them? Or is it that because of what has happened in the past, which we are not disregarding, you just can't seem to get past. You're not getting past because while you want to be healed, you're forgetting what did you learn all this time? Stay in the word. 
Keep the times of prayer. Stay in the word. Keep the times of prayer. You know what you need for you to be free. Because if, you, if truth be told, two years ago, whatever crisis you went through, you had to run to the word and stay there. Why are you walking away from the word now? Why it is other people are encroaching in your time? Some of you need more time with the Lord than others. Let that be a constant. If anything, increase it, not decrease it. And what you also need to know is, stop wrestling back and forth with, am I saved? Am I, what does the word say so that we can move on? With the foundation of what salvation is, with the anchor of our soul as Yeshua, I want my soul healed. I want my spirit man to grow. I want where wounds are also healed and demons are going to go. Because there will be, there will be demons. But at the end of the day, it's a work of the spirit. So I hope that as we go back into worship, you will come to understand there are those who, I think I said to her recently, I said, God has accelerated your breakthrough. Like I, I am still trying to comprehend a simple voice note or phone call. One massive set of deliverance or Jesus, my husband is waiting on me. Please do what you need to do because I got a call of some memory that needs attention because it's so drastic. She can't rest and that's one person. Jesus, it's all yours. And he does it. They listen. They follow what he says to do. How is that possible when there are some of us Sunday after Sunday the same thing over and over. It's not that he has favorites, y'all. It's not. It's that. Here's, let me tell you the difference. You ain't living here, you ain't seeing me. If you get a phone call, it's because I think it's safe for you to call me because your handler is waiting to find out who's helping you. These are the ex satanists You can't come up on Zoom because I'm not allowing you to come just yet. It's too dangerous for you and for me. It's called Yeshua. You have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do it. I want you. You have to do it. And he puts someone to walk with you. Do you understand? That's the difference. So let us live as if this is the last moment of the rest of our life. Be that whatever the situation. Never feel that you are being a bother. But you've got to understand. Don't allow the devil to tell you to crowd Jesus out of your life. And, and be telling you things. And you are just like, I don't know what to do. But if truth be known, have you been really after him? Have you been, when you wake up, you want him? Have you been transparent? You know, it's like somebody on a diet. I ate this, I ate that, I ate the other. But you didn't lose no weight and you're telling the weight loss person. But I ate everything I was, I did this time. It was in a closet eating some two big pieces of cake. But you didn't, that was light. So I didn't need to write it down. Those are the things that we do spiritually. We do. I know the word does not lie. So I am so grateful because he gives us everything for life and godliness in the word. And here's what. Don't feel bad. Even if you got stuck, just understand there's hope. And one day, one day, you're going to do like Job. And you're going to say, I heard of you, but now I see you with my own eyes. That is where we are going. So Father... I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. I thank you for all that you are doing in our life. I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you will not forget us. You've never forgotten us. You continue, 
Father, to love us. You continue to take us through. You continue. God, we are asking you to remind us what your word says. Father, we are asking you that our soul will be submitted to what your word says. That we are able to say, God, every part of our soul must submit to your word. That we will not live through our feelings. In the mighty name of Yeshua. But we will also not allow ourselves to waver on what you have said. Because your word is truth. And your word is life. So Father, I thank you for all that you're doing and all that you'll continue to do. I pray for those who are part of the service today. I pray for the breakthrough that they are desiring, but more than ever, I pray that their love for you will increase. I pray that their desire for you will increase. Father, I pray that we all would hunger and thirst for you because that is the key. That is the key to love you. Do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love Yeshua? If you love Yeshua, fear not. He more than loves you. But when he carries you in the palm of his hand, he will not have to spend half the time trying to convince you to stay in the palm of his hand because you love him, you want to be with him. God, help us to want to be with you because you have the words of eternal life. And so I pray today, Father, that as we continue to worship, this will be more than worshiping in song and having a good feeling that truly we will worship in song and there will be breakthrough in our soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God.